Whoa. What's up, guys? This is, this will be number three uh, on the ball screw diddling. So this is what we got. This is the coupler end. And this is what I came up with um, as the way to sort of retrofit um, the bearing uh, on the coupler side. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm happy with how it turned out. Um, it probably would have been easier to, if you could, um, if you wanted to just like remake all of this stuff uh, to just incorporate uh, a, a bearing, uh, but I didn't want to have to change a bunch of other stuff, so um, yeah, that's what I came up with. <laughs> uh, you can see the bearing in there, um, it's got a snap ring and uh, it's like a slip fit onto there, so um, it's just giving the coupling uh, radial support. Um, because it's not like a, it's like an old ham style opposed to uh, like a spider or something that uh, doesn't need support, I guess. Uh, on the end of the screw here, um, it was a fun exercise. Uh, my dad and I set up uh, a tool post grinder on his lathe and uh, did some grinding for these bearing fits. Um, so that was a fun little side trek. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it's, I think it'll work. Um, this one spins nice and easy, and yeah. So the next the next thing on the list is um, put the ball nut back together and uh, fit the shims. So. There you go. So this is the, um, the ball nut. And I'll talk about what I did to this. Uh, the first thing was the original ball nut that um, the machine was built around had um, the uh, grease fitting hole or the lube hole uh, on this side, this nut just so happened to come with it on the other side, so uh, it just wasn't going to work um, to move it to this side. Uh, the table, underside of the table, was sort of machined with a big uh, ball end mill to make some clearance for uh, this fitting that sticks up under the table, and it just wasn't going to work over there, so six by one set screw. Uh, lock tie that in to uh, plug the hole and come around to the other side and drilled and tapped a new uh, six by one uh, hole for uh, this fitting to go into and to clear under the table. Um, used a solid carbide tap and it seemed once you got through sort of the uh, outer layer, it, it tapped relatively easy. I mean, it was still hard, but um, it wouldn't appear that the nut was like through hardened. But, uh, and then just a sort of a counter bore because it's on uh, that radius there. And uh, it, went, it went pretty well. A little nervous at first, but so that was the uh, fitting fitting the fitting fitting and after that uh, I did this one on the uh, previous nut as well and this is um, the only ground surface uh, from the factory is on this face here and um, this side is not ground uh, so I set it up on the surface grinder and uh, ground this surface parallel to this and uh, then uh, I flipped it over and then ground uh, this face here uh, as well. Just touched it up. Um, you can see the 
And I, I have no way of checking, like, uh, you know, the, the two factory faces to each other, but I just have to make the assumption uh, that uh, this is this is all I really got to work with, so um, I figure if I can get as many, uh, you know, flat surfaces, the better. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Um, got to put the balls in there. And I also uh, touched up this face. Um, this is the uh, mount that holds it to the table. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So I got the ball nut uh, assembled and uh, ready to go back together into the machine. Um, so I uh, fitted the spacers. Um, I got some gauge blocks and uh, got sort of like a, a baseline uh, thickness to sort of shoot for when I was surface grinding. And uh, I just went back and forth, back and forth and crept up on a... Uh, a fit that I felt was uh, appropriate and um, as I was making grinding the, the shims thinner and thinner uh, you could definitely feel um, as you got closer to a, a workable amount of preload because the balls you know you'd feel some notchiness and uh, so I just kept grinding until uh, that that went away and um, yeah, I'm pretty pretty happy with it. Be curious to see uh, how it works. Um, pumped it full of grease and I'm gonna go for it. And I also found a piece of heat shrink and stuck it over uh, the two nuts. Uh, I don't know. Seems like stuff could get in there if it had the chance. So we'll see how that works. But. So I guess the only thing now is to uh, put it all together. Thought I'd give a better shot of uh, the little housing without the screw. You could see the snap ring and bearing in there a little better. And then here's the end shot. I was happy when I put the table back on and got the motor and coupling situated that um, I was planning on uh, losing some uh, X travel due to that, uh, you know, the bearing holder right there. Um, but as you can see, it don't hit the saddle, so. Winning, I suppose.
that's all I got, folks. I think we'll call it a wrap for today. Still a couple things to button up. Of course, got to put the sheet metal back on the table and gonna add a, a seal or something to uh, prevent all of the chips and stuff filling in between those back uh, linear uh, rail cars on the saddle. Uh, when I was putting the table back together, uh, I had noticed a while ago that when I would go to fill the uh, Zerks um, that feed the X and the Y that I seem to be getting more grease on the Y and not opposed to the X. So um, when I put the table back on I tried to uh, make both of the uh, lines that feed the nuts the same length and it seems to be working uh, a lot better now. Also switched to like a lighter linear motion centric grease so see how that works but i think for the time being we'll uh, catch you in the next one and um take care